Statistics and Excel. Dice Central Limit Theorem Example Problem Part Number 2. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point constructing the tables as we move forward from here or possibly just look at this from a theory standpoint standpoint related to probability or more broadly statistics in general. If you do have access to this workbook, there are three tabs down below. The example, practice, and blank. Example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and will be continuing with the blank part of the worksheet going forward, practicing our Excel tool as we construct the practice problem. So we're looking at scenarios related to our dice. We started with one dice and we wanted to think about what are the odds of rolling one dice, each number of one dice. We plotted them out graphically and then we were asking the question, what if I went to two dice? If we go to two dice, I can put those two side by side. We're going to imagine we have a red die and a black die, and we mapped out all the different combinations of the different kind of numbers that we could get to with two dice. Instead of having the max number be six, the max number is 12. And we have actually have 36 different options of numbers, combinations that could be created as we have mapped out here. And they don't all come up evenly now because we're going to add the dice together. So this is going to be the count of the different combinations that we can have with the two dice, which we then mapped out over here. We have now this one, this blue item is with the two dice and we can compare that. And we're practicing our Excel uh, tools for making our charts over here. And we compared that to the one dice, but Instead of having the one dice just have one number, we wanted it to be comparable by having the same total of 36. So we took the odds of 16, uh, 67 or 1, 6 and said, let's multiply that times 36. So now we can kind of see these two charts that are somewhat comparable so that we can analyze the shape that is being generated. And then we said, okay, what's it gonna look like if we add another dice? So we add another dice, an orange die, a red die, and a black die. We ask how many different combinations that we could have. And you could say, well, it's going to be six times six times six or six to the third. And we actually mapped them out so you can see all of the different combinations, which looks difficult to do, but it's pretty easy if we do it systematically. And then we thought about what are the different combinations of numbers that could come up if we roll three dice. And uh, so there we have it. We have 216 uh, different or, or count of the numbers. And the maximum number that we could get to is going to be uh, the 18. Three sets of dice, six, six, and six is going to be the 18. 
We then mapped it out in a chart with the three dates. So now you can see the blue, you can see what's happening. We get a nice curve here. It's being a little bit more spread out as we have the larger number that the dice can add up to. We wanted to compare to that the two die, but instead of the two die being out of 36, we would like to have it be out of 216. So we took the same ratios that we had before and applied that to the 216 so that now we can look at the shape here and have it comparable with the same basic like area under the graph of this one. And then we did the same thing with the one dice. Instead of it being out of six or, or 36, we wanna take it out of 216. And so now we have the comparability of those three pictures. We're gonna do two more dice. We're gonna add these. It's gonna be quite somewhat tedious to add two more dice because we're gonna map out all of the different combinations and then create the graphs. So we'll practice that. And then we'll look at the idea of, well, what if I take the average of the dice? So I have one dice and then two dice. I take the average uh, of the outcome and then three dice and the average of the outcome and we'll analyze those, noting that the concept of the bell-shaped curve will start to become relevant as we start to think about this, possibly as, for example, like a sample, this being similar to us taking a sample of what we're imagining statistically to be like an infinite number of die, right? That would be the population infinite. We're taking samples uh, of it, basically adding dice so we had one dice and now we have two dice in like our sample and three dice basically in our sample we're looking at the total outcomes and then next time we'll take a look at the averages we'll see that it starts to uh, go towards a bell-shaped curve the bell-shaped curve being of course a critical tool especially in things like statistical sampling because we know characteristics about the bell-shaped curves that can be quite useful in making uh, inductive reasoning in making uh, predictions. All right, so we're going to do the same thing over here and add another die. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the uh, T to the W. We're going to copy that. We're going to move that to the right. And I'm going to put this in column AJ and just paste it down. Boom. And so we're going to add another die. And let's say the new one is going to be, let's say it's going to be yellow. Yellow. And I'm going to make this uh, bucket yellow and we'll keep it black because that stands out more than the white against the lighter color of yellow. And then I'm going to say, okay, what are the different combinations we can have with four dice? Well, that's going to be four. That's going to be equal to four times four times four uh, times four. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. It's going to be equal to six times six times six times six, right? Or six to the fourth. So you would think we would get to the 1,296. But I'd like to map all those numbers out so that we can then sum up all, all of the different combinations in the sum column. That's gonna be somewhat tedious. Let's delete the sum column for now. I'm gonna select this and delete it. And so that doesn't mess us up. So you, so you might think, well, that's gonna be quite tedious, but we've already done this for the three dice and you can see the outer bit here shows us the, the, all of the combinations for the three dice. So if I take this whole thing, then I could say, let's compare this to the new dice as though it had a one. If, it, if this was a one, then these are all the combinations with a one. And then I could do the same thing if it was a two, if it was a three and so on and so forth. So let's, I'll show you what I mean. Let's delete this last bit right now. I'm gonna delete that, get that out of here get out of here thing and then we're going to go back up top and let's say all right let's say we're going to say that this is going to be uh the yellow dice we roll a one and then i'm going to in the second area i'm going to say this equals the one above it and then i'm just going to simply double click that down boom goes all the way down control shift down so there's all of the combos of the one dice then I'm just going to copy this entire thing. I'm just going to select this top bit, control shift down and control C, paste that right here. And these are all the combos if I change this to a two. So a dice with a two. 
and then I'm just going to select those and say control shift down, copy that whole thing, paste it right here, and this would be with a three. And then I'll select all those, control shift down, control C for the copy, paste it right here. These are all the combinations with a four. Selecting these again, control shift down, control C, pasting it again, ultra vez. These are all the copies with a five. Uno vez mas, one more time, por favor, please. Copy it, paste it down. These are all the combos with a six, control shift down. There we have it, boom. So let's see if that uh, does what we would expect. Let's go all the way down and do a count on this. Let's count these. So, oh my goodness, what happened there? Okay, I just hit a random button, but count. And then we're gonna say this is gonna be equals count. And so we'll just count these up. Control shift up, all the way up, not taking the black bit, so shift down and enter. There's the 12, uh, 1296. Let's make this blue and bordered. So we, it looks like we have all the combinations properly input. So I'll make this blue and bordered. I'm gonna take this last bit, control shift up and shift down. Make that blue and bordered, border blue. Let's go back up and say, all right, hopefully we've got that correct. We see the check number looks correct. So I'm gonna say, all right, I'm assuming that we can just sum this up now. Let's sum them up, all the combinations of the four dice that we can have. So let's make this black and white and center. So I'm gonna sum up the four dice. Sum up yellow, orange, red, and black die. So we have the four, that's the lowest number we can come out to with four ones. And then we can copy that down, boom. So there's all the different combinations that, that we could get. Let's make that uh, bordered and blue, not black, blue. I can't see it if it's black on black. So let's go and then make a skinny AN, a skinny AN column. And so then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have our totals. So, so the totals, uh, let's, well, this will be like our bucket, our buckets. Now what's the largest number? I can, I can think about it. Well, it's gonna be six times four, but I can then say, well, let's just pick up the max out of here. What's the highest combo number that we could have? And it comes out to be 24. So that means I need 24 buckets. One, two, three, let's grab those three and put our, cell, our fill handle, grab the fill handle, drag it down to 24, 24 buckets. And then we're gonna say, let's just do a simple count. I count if, let's just say count if, boom. So we'll just say this equals count if, uh, and, and we could do some, some different ways that we could, we could do. I could use a spill frequency function, but the count if is a pretty simple thing to do here. So I'm going to use that one. Count if, and we'll pick up the range. So the range is going to be all of these summed columns. Control shift down. Control backspace. or sh Yeah, control backspace to get back up. I want to make that absolute so that that doesn't move when I copy it down. So I'm going to say F4 dollar sign before all the numbers and all of the letters in the range so that when I copy this down, the range doesn't move down. Comma to the next argument. What's the criteria? Find all of the ones. There's not going to be any ones because the smallest number that we could get to is a four, but do it anyways. Try to tell, let's check that. There it is. If I copy that down, it should properly copy down the formula. Now we can't get a one. You can't get a two with four dice because there's no zeros on the dice. You can't get a three. You could get a four, but there's only one way to get the four. And uh, we could get a five. There's four ways to get a five. There's 10 ways to get a six, 20 ways to get a seven, 35 ways to get an eight, 56 ways to get a nine. And it goes on up to uh, 400, 146 ways to get a 14. And then it goes back down. It kind of peaks right there. All right, so let's go ahead and say, all right, if that is the case, let's take the total over here. 
summing this up, I'm going to say alt equals to sum that up. There's our 12... Uh, 96, which matches the total of the count that we looked at, gives us a nice little double check that things are properly done. Let's go and make this black and white home tab font group. We're going to make this black and white and let's center it. Let's make this blue and bordered. Control shift down. We're going to go and make it border blue, border blue, because it's blue is nice. Okay. So now let's make a, a graph out of this. I'm going to select the counts, not including the total. And let's just insert a nice graph. And we'll start off with a bar graph, but then we'll change it to a line graph this time since the bar graph is getting kind of busy. So we're going to say charts. Let's hit the graph. Bar graph. This is for four dice. So four dice bar graph right there. There you go. That's what we got. Okay, so then why is this? This should be what happened to my title. This should be four dice. Okay, so now I'd like to put the other th ones on top of this one. So let's see if I can say, let's take what happened with the three over here. I'd like to overlay all my graphs again. So this was with the three total totals with the three. Let's copy that and put that over here underneath. So I'm going to paste it normal and then I'm going to paste it one, two, three. So I get the formatting, but, but uh, it's static just to make sure I'm not pulling any uh, formulas that are going to mess things up. There's the static numbers. We're going to take the percent. Let's take the percent of the total. So this will be equal to this number divided by the total which was 216 for before. I want to make that second bit absolute F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number and enter. Let's make it a percent to five to recognize, percent of five to recognize and a couple decimals at zero. I'm going to double click on the fill handle to break it on down. Double checking down below that this adds up to 100. Alt equals there's the hundred looks mooey b to the n b n so let's go to the home tab font group make this black white center it now what i'd like to say is this is going to be adjusted to be out of one two nine six instead of being out of 216 i would like to make it out of one two nine six by taking this number times the ratios so that we have a graph that has like the same amount under the curve that might be a little bit easier for us to visualize what is happening. K esta pasando aquí. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to this times this. And that first number, I don't want it to move down when I copy it down. That means F4 on the keyboard. That means dollar sign before the letter and the number. Absolute reference in other words. Let's go ahead and double click copying that thing down and then we'll total it up. Alt equals comes out to that 1296, which is what we wanted it to do. And we did what we wanted it to do, uh, which is nice. Home tab font group. Let's put some borders around it. Let's make it blue and then let's add that to our graph. So I'm going to go to I want to have a ledger. Let's add over here. We need we need a legend so I can see what's happening. There it is. OK, now get rid of the get out of here now that I've done that. Then we're going to go to our chart design. We're going to go to the data and I want to say this first one that I want to change the legend name. So I'm going to edit it and say that's with four dice. Okay, and then I'm going to say, okay, and then I want to add another one, which is going to be with three dice and three dice. The range is going to be down here, which we're going to pull from the outer column for the three dice situation, not including the total and okay, boom, boom. All right. So there we, so we can see what's happening with the, with the data, with that comparison. Let's also compare that to the other ones, which I had the two dice and the one dice. So I'm just going to copy the tables we had last time. We had these tables. I'm going to copy these over and then adjust them 
so that they have the same area or the same count. So paste them here. But then I want to make this not out of 216, but out of 1296. So I'm going to use the same ratio concept for the two dice, but I want the total to be that number. So I'm going to say this equals the percent times this number, F4 on the keyboard, because I don't want that number to change as I copy it down, enter, put my cursor back on it, double click, bringing it down, adds up to the new number 1,296. The same for one dice, same thing. I don't want it to be out of 216, I want it to be out of 1296. So same percent, but now times the total of 1296, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, putting my cursor on that, double clicking it, bringing it down. All right, let's add those to our graph. Two more data sets. Chart design. Select the data. I want to add another data set. This is going to be for the two dice. Two dice. And that's going to be boom, boom, boom. This one. D -d 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 not including the total. And then, oh, wait a sec. I put it in the wrong area. I do that often. It's got to go down here. Two dice. Do do. Okay, and then one dice. Let's add one more for one dice, which I should call a die, I guess, but whatever, one dice. And then we'll say these are the ones. I did it again. Dang it, it's got to go down here. This is the range. Get your head in the game. Get your head in the game. Okay, we're going to say, okay. So now, so there we have it now. Why... Now I have these long names. I don't like that. Let's edit this one. Why does I have this big... Uh, oh, why does it have this big name next to it? Get that out of here. It's messing up everything. You're messing everything up. This is, should just be two dice. That's all it should be. That's all it should say. And then this should just say one dice. Let's edit that one. Why are you messing everything up? Why is that doing that? Stop it. That should go there. One dice. One dice. And then delete all of this stuff. Okay. Okay. So now if I look at it. So there we go. So now we can kind of see it pretty clearly. So now we can get an idea of what's happening. Now it's getting a little, a little too messy with the full chart. So let's change it to, let's change the chart type by going to the chart design. And then I'm gonna change the chart type to instead of a column, just a line chart. And so it's picking, it's picking one there for us. It's like the basic line chart. It looks like, okay, that looks like the one. And so now you've got this so you can see what's happening here with the one and then the two die and then the three die and you're getting a little bit more spread out uh, of the data on the four dice as it's being spread out to a larger amount of possible numbers. All right, let's do this one more time and then we'll take a look at the averages. So we'll do it again one more time. I'm going to take this whole thing, the AI to the AM. Well, not the AM. Let's go to the AI to the AL and then copy that. I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to put it in the AZ. And then I'm going to add a new color, which is going to be green. Same thing. There's a lot of numbers, but we're just going to apply the same concept to get all the combos down. Let's make this green and white and let's center it. Let's make it a darker green so it pops. There we go. All right. So what are the number of combos? It's going to be Six times six times six times six times six, right? Which would be the 7,776. So that's fine. Let's see if we can get all the combos. Now, there's a whole lot of numbers here, but the concept is the same. All of these I can put next to a one, and then an all, that would be all the combinations of a one on the new dice, and then all the combinations of a two. So I'm just going to delete this last bit. Let's delete this total, shift it up. And then let's just start with a number one. Green dice has a one. The next one is equal to the one above it. Enter, copying that down, double click. 
And then I can just take this whole thing, control shift down. And I can copy that and then just paste that whole thing here. Boom. And then this is all the combinations if there's a two. And then take, oh man, what happened? That's not what I was supposed to do. Then I'm gonna take this, control shift down, and then copy, and then paste. And then I'll just change that to a three. There's all the combos for a three. And then I'll take this whole thing, control shift down, copy, paste it. And here's all the combos with a four. And then I'll take this whole thing, control shift down, copy, paste it. There's all the combos with a five. Oh, I did it again. Why do I do that? Why? Now I'm, now I'm lost over on the side. Oh, I was rolling. I was ro I had a roll going. Okay. It's okay. I'm back. I'm going to take this control shift down, copy, and then paste it down here. And these are all the combos with a six and that should work. So now I'm going to say control shift down and control shift down, control shift down. So now we're at the bottom and let's count it. So we're going to count and see if we get to our total equals the count dot dot control shift up shift down. So I don't pick up the title enter. There's the seven, 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 six looks mooey b to the n otherwise known as bn home tab font group making that black and uh, i'm sorry bordered in blue and then put our cursor here control shift up shift down and going border blue again control shift up okay control shift up i want to be up top here all right, so now let's sum these up. So all the different combos that we have, we can sum them up with our five die. We got the five die. So I'm gonna say, let's make this summing up the combos. The lowest number we can get with five die is five ones, that would be five. And then I can just copy those down. There's all the combos, but they're not in order. Let's go to the home tab font group, border blue, that bad dog. And so we're going to now need all the combos. So let's make a skinny B because we need not just a B, but to B, uh, B, N. Okay. So now we're going to say this is going to be, uh, the count. This will be our, our numbers, the combos that we can have. What's the highest number we can get to? Well, we can say, well, it's going to be six times five. Or I can say, what's the max, the max number that we have here? Por favor, Excel, would you give me that number? We get 30. So now I can have th up to 30. One, two, here's our buckets. I should say buckets. That's what I should call them. And then we'll say one, two, down to 30. Let's be consistent. Be consistent, okay? Stop changing thing, changing names on us. And then we're going to have the count if, and so we're just going to do our count if formula equals count if tab, this whole column, control shift down, control backspace. I need to have it to be absolute F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the numbers telling Excel, do not move that when I copy it down, comma then we want you to find all the ones there aren't going to be any because you can only get the minimum number of a five but the point is i do want that number to copy down when i copy it down so enter and put our cursor on it copy it down double click in the fill handle so you can't get a one with five die you can't get a two with five die you can't get a three with five die you can't get a four with five die. you can get a five rolling five die but there's only one way to do that you can get a six. There's five ways to do that. You can get a seven. There's 15 ways to do that. You can get an eight, 35 ways on up to the number 17 and 18, which both have 780 ways combos that you can get. And then it goes back down. So that's where it's going to be peaking at. Let's put our total down here and say alt equals to sum up the tote. And there's our seven, 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 six again, giving us some confidence on that number. Control shift up, control or shift down. Let's make that border blue, border blue. And let's go up top and say, this is gonna be black and white, home tab, black and white. And then 
we're going to center that. All right, so let's go ahead and then make our table again. This time, let's just make it from the start with a line chart instead of a, a bar. So I'm going to select all of this data, and I'm going to say insert. And this time, let's go right to the lines, right to the lines. There it is. So, and then I'm going to say this is going to be five dice. Okay, and then we can add the other ones we had on top of it in a similar fashion as we had done before. So I'm gonna go back to the last data. Let's just copy all of it this time. I'm gonna go from this one all the way down to these, and then I'll just adjust them all to align to our new totals. So I'll just copy all of this. And I'm gonna say, just put it right down here and we'll paste it normal. And then I'm also gonna paste it one, two, three. So this will be four dice. Let's do our percentage of the total. So I'm gonna say this is my percent of the total, which is gonna be equal to this divided by the total, which was this one, two, nine, six. I wanna make that bottom number absolute, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, enter, put my cursor back on it, percentify to recognize, add some decimals, fill handle double click in the fill handle button to bring it down delete that bottom bit because i want to sum it up the other way to double check our numbers which is alt equals alt equals 100 percent good that's what it should be but now i want to adjust the total to be a i'll just call it adj to be the number seven 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 six instead of this number so it will be comparable to the new chart. So we can look at the shape of the chart using the same kind of totals or area. So we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to this number, uh, I'm sorry, no, this number times the percent. This number, I wanna be the same all the way down. So I'm gonna say F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, enter, put my cursor on the fill handle, double click it on down, and then we'll sum it up, alt equals. There's the 7776. Let's select that whole bit, make it blue and bordered, border blue. We'll make the header black and white and centered black and white and centered. Let's do the same thing. This was our three dice. I don't want it to be out of 216 now or the 1,296, but rather we want it to be out of once again, the 7776. So I'm gonna use these same ratios but I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to this number times the 7776, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, enter, double click it down. The total should be 7776. Now it is, same here. I don't want it to be out of 1,296 for the two dice, but rather to be out of the 7776. And so we'll do that. And this is just going to be equal to this number times the 7776 F4 in the keyboard so that that will be absolute. Enter, fill handle, double click in the button to bring it down. One more time for the one dice. Once again, I want it to be out of the 7776. So this is going to be equal to this number times the 7776 F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter, the number, enter, put my cursor back on it, double click, bringing it down. The total should be equal, alt equal 7776. So that I think is good. Let's go up top and just add those to our chart. So now we're going to go chart design. Let's first add the legend. So legend needs to be added. Okay. So there we have it. And then I'm going to go, let's go to the data and I'm going to change this first data name. Let's see if I could do this better this time. So I don't mess it up. This is going to be five dice. Okay. And then let's add another one, add a new data for the four dice. And then make sure I go down here before I click off of it or else it's going to mess everything up like I did before. And I don't want to mess everything up. I want it to be unmessed up and make it easily understandable. So let's take that whole thing and say, okay, not the total and okay. So there we have it. All right. And now let's add another one. This is going to be 
with the three dice and then put my cursor down here. Make sure to change this before I click off of it. Here's the numbers for the three dice, not including the total. Okay. And then we want another one for two dice. And then put my cursor down here, delete this so I don't mess anything up. Two dice, that's gonna be these ones. And then okay, and then one more time, one more round, because I didn't hear no bell. I didn't hear no, I don't stop until I hear the bell because that means food, that means food's gonna happen. And I don't, if I don't hear no bell, then I don't stop for nothing, man. Stop for nothing. And I'm gonna say, okay, here we go. All right, so there we have it. So now we've got our charts and, and so we've adjusted them so they kind of have, uh, so they can be comparable in terms of shape, right? So obviously we have our, our first one dice, we've got then the two dice and we got the three dice, the four dice and you get this more spread out uh, kind of bellish shapish curve here. And we can continue that uh, going out and you can imagine basically what's gonna happen to the shape. What we want to do next time then is to think, well, what if I did that same thing, but instead of just taking the total numbers, I'm going to take the average, right? And if I could still get the, like a bell shaped curve by taking the average and have it uh, go towards a bell shape, then I can use what we know about the characteristics of a bell shaped curve to help us make predictions about the total population. Remembering in this statistical example, we can kind of imagine the total population being as if we're going towards an infinite amount of dice, right? We're just keeping on adding more dice to see what's gonna happen. And then, so next time what we're gonna do is we'll take the average. So we're gonna imagine there's an infinite amount of dice and we're basically taking you know, the average of each of the dice and see what happens to those curves uh, as we go from one dice up to uh, five dice.